Welcome to Godot 101. This is the intro to 3D series part two. In the previous tutorial, we started a 3D project and we looked at how to navigate and create 3D objects. In this part, you'll learn how to import existing 3D objects that you've made or downloaded and how to use more of Godot's 3D nodes. So besides using the built-in primitive shapes, how do we get 3D objects into our game? Well, if you're familiar with 3D modeling software such as Blender, you can make your own models. But if not, there are many sources where you can download objects or even collections of objects for particular game types. One of my favorite makers of free game art is Kenny. You can find him at kenny.nl. And if you've watched some of my other tutorials, we used a lot of his assets in our 2D projects. So for this demo, we're going to be using this collection, the Kenny Platformer Kit. And it includes lots and lots of 3D models for making 3D platformer scenes like this, um, including the platforms, things like crates and barrels, uh, keys and coins, all sorts of fun stuff like that. So I'll include the link in the description below. Go ahead and download the asset pack like this and open it up. Now when you unzip this asset pack, you're going to find that the models are available in a variety of different formats. And some of these formats can be read by Godot and some can't. The ones that are most common are OBJ. OBJ you're going to see very often if you go and download 3D models from various places. OBJ is sort of an older format. DAE is known as the Collada format and a lot of Godot tutorials will have you use the Collada exporter to generate DAEs if you're using Blender. And then there's GLTF, which is a more, it's a newer format with a lot more features, and Godot supports it out of the box too. And since we've got it, that's the one we're going to use. So just drag this folder into your project folder for Godot. So I've dragged that folder into my Godot project folder, and I renamed it to Kinney Platformer Kit. And you can see this has got all these different model files in here. So when we switch back over to the Godot editor, you're going to see a progress bar while it goes through and imports all of those models. So let's go over to this folder and see what's going on. So here we see, I'm going to scroll down to the crate. That's the one I want to start with, the crate. Now if I click the import tab, you'll see the options you have for importing. And what's going to happen is Godot is going to make this model into a scene, just like you would do if you were creating a new scene to put your object in. And so we can tell it what type of node we want the root to be. I'm going to click this and I'm going to change it to a rigid body. So I want my crate to be a rigid body. And the root name is what it's going to be called when we open it. I'm going to go ahead and change that to crate. And I'm going to click on re-import. Now when I double click on the create file to open it, it's going to tell me that this file was automatically imported, right? And so you can't modify that. This is the original file. So what, we, what it's going to do is create a new inherited scene based on that file, and that's what we want. So I click new inherited, and there we see our create in our 3D space. And it's a rigid body, and the mesh is a child of it. And now we do have one small problem, and it appears that when Kenny exported these models, he left in a bit of an offset. And that's going to cause a problem because our crate is offset from our parent rigid body. And so when the rigid body rotates, it's going to rotate around its center, which means it's going to do this instead of rotating the way it should. So we need to fix that by offsetting the mesh back over to the origin. So click on the mesh and we're going to set its transform we're going to set the x to minus 0.5 we're going to set the y to minus 0.25 and we're going to set the z to 0.5 so that it is centered back on the origin and so now when the rigid body rotates right the crate goes along with it now we also need a collision shape for this body so let's add one of those. 
and the shape we want to give it is a box shape. And so you can scale the box shape using these handles, right, to scale it to the size you want. Or you can click on box shape here and set the extents to the size you want. Now extents represent the distance from the center. And since the crate is 0.5 units uh, across, then our extent should be 0.25 in all directions. And then we get a collision shape that perfectly fits the mesh. So let's save our crate, save that scene, and let's see how we can use it. I'm going to make a new scene, and I'm just going to give it a plain spatial as a root. And this is where we're going to bring our crate in. But our crate's a rigid body, which means gravity acts on it. So if we put this in, into the scene and run it, the crate's just going to fall away. So we need something to be the ground. And to do that, we're just we're going to add a static body. Static bodies are physics objects that don't move. Rename that to ground. And then we're going to add a mesh instance to it. I'm going to use a plane mesh. So a plane is a flat plane with only one side. If you look from the underneath, it's not there, right? It's a, it's a flat surface, one-sided surface. Now this mesh is two by two. If we click here, we can make it bigger. I'm going to expand this to 10 by 10. So we have a nice large surface for our crates to stand on. Now another thing about meshes is the color of a primitive mesh is white by default. So if you want it to be a different color, we need to go into the material. So you see here the mesh has a material property, and we can assign it a new spatial material. Click on that, and you'll see a whole list of properties. We're going to get into the details of materials a bit later, but for right now, the one you need to know is that the albedo property is the one that sets the color. So I'm going to click that. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to give my crate a nice uh, dark green color for the ground. Now this mesh is not going to stop the crates from falling because it doesn't have a collision shape. So we need a collision shape with it as well. Now there's two ways to add collision shapes to meshes. You saw the first way when we did the crate. We added a collision shape and gave it a shape. Another way to do it is to click on the mesh and then here in this menu we can add a collision shape to it by choosing create convex collision sibling. That will make a collision shape that's a sibling of the mesh, which is what we want, so it's a child of ground, and it automatically calculates one that fits this object. Now let's instance a few of the crates in the scene and kind of arrange them in a stack. Okay, so I have a nice wobbly stack of crates. Let's add a camera to the scene so we'll be able to see it. And I'm just going to take that camera and move it up and angle it down at the scene and run it. And there we go, our crates tumble to the ground. Now let's make this scene a little more dynamic by making the camera move. I want the camera to orbit around and just look at this from all directions as it's as it's running. Now moving the camera in a circular motion could take a lot of math, but there's no reason to do that. All we need to do is add a new spatial node that's at the origin and make the camera a child of it. Because, and I'm going to call this camera hub, because now if we rotate that spatial, the camera is attached to it, so it will rotate along with it, always pointing at the center. So all we need to do is write a little code to make that camera hub rotate. So let's add a script to our scene. 
and we're going to just in the process function we're going to tell the camera hub to rotate around the y-axis and I'm just going to give it a small value in radians and now when we run that scene our camera is smoothly rotating around the scene. So one more thing we can add to our scene to make it look a little nicer is some light. And in Godot there are a number of different light nodes you can choose from. We're going to use the directional light. So if we add that, and I'm going to pull this up in the air a bit so we can see it. And what a directional light does is it simulates light from a distant source like the sun. So in practice what you get is parallel rays of light coming down from an infinite distance and hitting everything at the same angle. And really it makes no difference where you put this node. All that matters is what direction you have it aiming. So if we want the light to point straight down, we would do that. Right? And so you can see the effect of the light on the objects getting brighter and smaller as I, or brighter and dimmer as I rotate it back and forth. So we'll put it at an angle so we have some sunlight streaming down. Actually, maybe I will tilt it this way a little bit too. But there's no shadows. Shadows are something you have to turn on. If you go over into the, the light properties, there is a shadow option. And that will give some shadows to our objects. Now let's run it and see what this scene looks like. Very nice. All right, so that will do it for this tutorial. In this installment, you learned how to import 3D models and turn them into objects in your game, how to create a scene and add some lighting. In the next video, we'll go a little more into depth in creating a more complex scene and creating a user-controlled character. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.